Hi, my name is Meng. I'm from Design Plus Code. We are on the eighth section of the Protopie course. And today we're going to learn how to create a page scroll with three pages so that you can swipe back and forth between these pages and also change the background color, but also detecting the scroll position by using a little bit of formula. Make sure to have the sketch file open so that we can import these screens from scratch, but otherwise the template is provided. First thing is we're going to create a new pie and then we're going to import from sketch the login, sign up and learn more, setting to 3x. Then we're going to import the other two screens. Perfect. Now we're going to go back to the first scene and this is where we're going to keep some elements that are being shared across the scenes. So first of all, we're going to select everything and then we're going to create a group because this will automatically create a full screen. So 375 by 812. We're going to name this one login and then we're going to take out the parts that are being shared. For example, the status bar and the dots. The second thing is we're going to create a container that is a paging container and we're going to use 100% and 100% for the height as well. And then we're going to put the login inside this container. Now, if you swipe this left and right, you're going to see that the page container as well as the status bar stays there while the rest of the content can be swiped but we need more pages. So we're gonna go ahead to the other screens and then turn them into pages. So this is the container for sign up. I'm gonna copy this, go back here and paste right here. Now I'm going to remove the status bar as well as the dots. Then I'm going to position the sign up so that the position starts at the width of the screen which is 375 and like this when I start swiping it just goes back and forth between these two screens let's do the same for the third screen so create a container name this learn more and then copy go back to the first scene put that right here inside the page container. Then we're gonna remove the status bar as well as the dots and position this for the X position 375 multiplied by 2 like this so 750. Now we have three screens inside our page scroll and then we can swipe back and forth between these screens. Okay, so that's easy enough. And this is a fairly common interface for user onboarding. The first time the user comes to an app, they're gonna see something very similar to this. They're gonna see an intro to the app and then they can swipe to the next screens until they see a login, a sign up or a skip button. The first thing we need to do here is to indicate uh, using this page indicator that we are on the second or on the third screen. So what we're gonna do is add a trigger for page scroll and we're gonna use detect. Now, what is detect? Well, this allows us to always see changes in any properties of any layer. For example, we wanna detect the changes when the user is scrolling the page scroll container. And anytime there's a change to the scroll, then it's going to affect the responses. In this case, we're gonna set a condition and set the property instead of X to scroll. So the scroll of page scroll would be equal to zero for the first condition. Now, what is this scroll value? Well, it is essentially the offset. So as you scroll, it's gonna say zero here. And as you scroll, it's gonna be 10, 20, and so on. So this is the position horizontally or vertically. So if it's vertical, it would be Y, horizontal would be X. And at the start, it's zero. For this first condition, we're going to open the dots container and set opacity 
we're gonna set the first dot to 100%. And then the second dot, again, set opacity. We're gonna set it to 30%. And the third dot, opacity to 30%. If you look at the demo, you're gonna see that it does affect uh, the percentage in terms of opacity for these elements. But the problem is they're already by default with opacity. So what you can do here is a little trick. It's to um, update your layers. So I'm gonna go back to sketch and make sure that this is by default 100%. And now coming back, I'm going to import sketch set to login and then import. What is interesting about this is that Protopy is going to detect all the layers that I have here versus the layers that I have in sketch and will update automatically the ones that have been changed without affecting the structure, which means that as I reorganize some of these layers into different pages and the dots, outside and then it simply detected that there were changes for these three layers. Great, now I can see the changes reflected here, so that's great. And when I scroll and I come back, it does uh, change to the opacity when I have the page scroll to zero. And then all I need to do is to set the default to 30% as well for these two layers. Now you might be asking, why is it that Detect didn't simply set these by default? Well, Detect is only going to start activating when the user starts scrolling. As a result, this will not be activated at start. Okay, so let's do the other two conditions. So I'm gonna copy and paste this two times. For this one, I'm gonna set to 375 and this one to 750. Then I'm going to set the opacity correctly for these three dots. So for the second condition, so for the second page, this one is going to be 30% and the middle one is going to be 100%. For the third page, it's going to be opacity 30% for the first one, the second one, but for the third one is going to be 100%. Now if you scroll this, you're going to see that it reacts beautifully. To the changes. Okay, so another thing we can do is change the background color as we scroll. So I'm going to create a new layer called rectangle and I'm going to set it to the size of my background right here. I'm going to put that layer underneath everything and I'm going to call that background. Then I'm going to set the fill to use the same color as this one. And I'm gonna make sure to delete the backgrounds for each of the screens. So the layer named card. And we should be good. So all of these screens share the same color and we can just change those colors using the conditions and the response. I'm going to select background and create a new color animation. Set the fill hex to the same color as this one. Copy this, put this right here in the second condition. I'm gonna use the code for red and then do the same for the third condition. And voila. I'm going to be able to change the color when I scroll to each of those screens. Now to make the color animation nicer, we can make it slower. So I'm gonna click on all of these and set it to 0.5. So the animation is a bit slower and much nicer to look at. One last thing that I wanted to show you is how to detect in real time the position of my scroll so that you have a better understanding of the scroll value. So we're gonna create a new text layer. We're gonna put it right here. We're gonna set it to 50 by 22. Let's center that. I'm gonna set it to zero by default. And 
Let's go to the text and center the text. Make it white, 12 in term of size, and then add a little fill that is black to let's say 30% with a radius of five. Now, as we detect this, we don't need to set the condition to be able to change the text value. We can just add a plus before the conditions and it's going to be text. And for the text, we're gonna select the text one, which we just created right here. And instead of using text, which is not dynamic, we're gonna use formula, which can be dynamic. In order to use formula, we have to click this little button here and it's gonna allow us to use auto completion. So I'm going to click on tilde to be able to search for any of those layers. And I want to use the page scroll, specifically the scroll offset and press OK. So when I have this, then every time that I'm scrolling, so using the detect, it's going to change the value of my text. And therefore we have this value changing in real time. I think that's really cool. I hope you're having fun learning these techniques. In the next session, we're going to take this to the next level and add a form. So using inputs and then a submit so that we can set up like a success message with animation. And I think it's gonna be very useful. See you in the next session.